Hi, I'm Kurt with Extreme Guitar. So uh, today I wanted to go over some strumming patterns and picking patterns, and you can use this with pretty much any song. There's a pattern that you typically would do, in, and I'm not gonna be talking about finger picking. I'm using the pick, and I'm gonna take the chords from Sweet Child of Mine. It's just D, C, and G. Same chords go to Sweet Home Alabama, probably a hundred other songs. I mean, I could go. fit hundreds of songs but for instance if you think of that with Sweet Home Alabama I just did D C and G I'm going to use the 120 beats per minute it kind of comes out to So I just did it just like they would in, in the song Switch Out of Mine, but what I'm going to do now is if you were, for instance, playing with a song or playing with a friend, then you can do it in this way so that you're not just doing the exact same thing that the other person is doing. On the same beat, I'm going to pick out the notes, making sure I'm hitting the root note of the D right now, and then eventually when I change, I'm going to hit the C root note, and by the way, um, when I say C, I'm using C at 9. You can use the full C this way. Sometimes I'll add in that optional note. Some people call it G over C. I like that, but for this particular song, I'm going to use C at 9. Uh, now, there's two different versions of C at 9, by the way. You can use it with your pinky on the last note. There, and you have that G added or you can do it without it. So I'm gonna use it without it just because I prefer it with this particular progression. So I'm going to go with a pattern that goes like this. Now you'll be able to see this in the tab that I include with this, but what you're gonna be doing is root note and then you sort of arpeggio it with the, the D G B so let's try that again so I got and that is the pattern that I'm using throughout the entire song it's just I change it just slightly because I'm following the root notes for the next string that I come across. So let's try this really slowly, going from D to C at 9 to G. We have D. So if we if we were to work with the tempo of the song, it's so if we keep that tempo in mind, it goes I'm not hitting every note exactly every time, but it's close enough. When you have a pattern, people aren't going to hear, oh, hey, you missed that note. No, they're not going to hear that because you're following a pattern that's close enough. And especially if you have somebody that's strumming along like this. So when you have someone strumming along like this, and then you're doing your thing, So 
that's that's how I would do this strumming pattern. You can do it with other songs. I just happened to use this one because I was teaching a group of my students this particular song. And I recently started to work on um, outside of the straight chords that they strum. I was showing some of my other students who were a little more advanced how to do that particular style there. So if you're a beginner, it is still very much approachable, but if you're very, very new, you should probably stick with the basic chords. Because like, even just doing what I did here, the strong, mute, that's another technique altogether. Right now I'm just focusing on this other guitar part, and by the way, I like to use my pinky as a kickstand so that I'm not just floating in the air trying to pick out each of the notes. Some people will do that with a finger, whether it's a pinky, middle, or a ring finger, and some people will just rest on the bridge. You find what what feels the best for you, what's the easiest for you, and, and work with that. I tend to use my pinky and I have room to do my, my strumming even when I do it this way. When I'm when I'm doing this picking thing, it's a lot easier for me to have my my kick stand um, to keep my hand in place so that I don't lose where I'm at and I hit a wrong string. I mean, if you're playing the right chord, there really technically isn't a wrong string to hit. But if I'm really trying to hit the root note, which really drives it well, uh, then then yeah, that, that does make a difference for me myself. I, I really want to hit that root note. If I miss it, I'll just keep playing the chord and it'll just roll right together because like for instance on that D string, you can hit all of these notes and if I accidentally hit the A there, when I'm trying to hit the root note, I go then eventually I do hit the root note, so it just mixes in really nicely. Um, there's a lot of, of other uh, songs that use root notes just like that. One song that comes into mind, it's called Rocky Raccoon from the Beatles. That was one song that was very big on hitting the root notes. So you have the... Either way, you're hitting every root note on every chord and doing that little strumming pattern. So every song is different. Every pattern that you can come up with could be different. Um, you can do it with any song and, and that's the beauty of it. Um, you could be playing at a campfire. You could be playing with a group of friends. You could go up on stage and play a cover song or a song that you wrote. Have fun with it. Experiment. So. Hope that was a helpful little uh, instructional piece there. You can take a look at the, the PDF that will give you details on what I was just doing. And um, let me know what you think.